Hello, my name is Neil Leach, and I want to, want to offer you some reflections today on my journey with Midjourney. Um, over the last few days, I've been experimenting with Midjourney, and I'm quite surprised and astonished by its capabilities, and I wanted to maybe record some of my early reflections on Midjourney. Um, so Midjourney was released in very recently, but I'm now in, in July. In, in June, it became accessible to many people, and now it seems to become extremely popular. Um, and it seems to be a game changer in terms of, let's say, um, of, of conceptual design itself. Um, Midjourney works through prompts. You basically have to input some text, and then it um, <clears throat> connects the text with images um, through captions it finds on the internet. And so it can generate a whole range of different images that are associated with the text that you produce. Um, we call these text prompts. And there's a whole new field that has been developed called prompt engineering. And that seems to be a particular skill that architects will need to learn because you have to be very precise in your prompts in order to get the best results. The prompts I used for this early one were included the name Zahaidid Architects, uh, the name Refik Anadol, and Blade Runner. It seems that the Blade of Blade Runner was something that it picked up on. But anyway, this result, I thought, was truly very promising, promising and it encouraged me to explore it further. It seemed to me that, that the mid-journey has huge potential in the architectural design pr um, uh, project. Uh, so maybe just take us back to 2019 when this all began with, um, with uh, style GANs, the use of generative adversarial networks, which were, were brought into architecture. And they were the first technique that really could generate something that was more controlled as an image. Generative adversarial networks are based on two uh, neural networks. One, uh, a generator that is producing stuff and then a discriminator that is discriminating and selecting the ones that are convincing and so on until eventually you get to the point where you, the one trains the other and you can produce very effective images. Well, a diffusion model is based on a very different notion. It's not, it's not based on, on, on loading up a whole series of images for a particular project, but it draws upon a more generalized data set, which, it, uh, which allows it to much more quickly uh, be used in a certain way. It also lacks possibly some of the specificity of certain particular subjects. It's not so good, for example, of faces and, 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 and hands and so on, but nonetheless, it is very accessible. The other aspect of it is, it, it, it is, is that it's, uh, it's based on, on, on a, a diffusion model whereby you use, uh, um, you use a, a Markov chain rather than um, any form of, uh, of GANs. And, and, and by bringing in a Gaussian noise, it disrupts the production. It forces the system to then repair it, thereby coming up with novel outcomes. Well, in the case of this particular the, the style GANs that Graphic Gannadol produced, um, uh, I think probably the first one ever, ever used to produce um, an architectural uh, study, as it were. This was one of the images that came out of it, and it became the, the image for the front cover of my first book on architecture, Architecture in the Age of Artificial Intelligence, an introduction to AI for Architecture, that came out in December of 2021 and is currently about to come out in Chinese. Well, this book in many ways was um, in some ways ahead of its time because there were very few examples of architecture, um, of buildings, of, of designs being made by AI at that time. And clearly that, that whole situation has changed completely. Um, another important step was the, the introduction of, of cycle GANs and other forms of GANs. Um, and here I'm looking, we're looking at uh, Deep Mumblau, the project by Kopp Mumblau that was led by Daniel Bolajan, who is the AI genius in charge. And this is a project that won the Digital Futures Award in 2021. It is based on a data set of the work of, uh, of Kopp Mumblau, but it's using cycle GANs, whereby you're pairing that off against another unpaired data set so that it extrapolates. Whereas cycle GANs, whereas uh, style GANs interpolates, it's based on a finite set of information data. This one breeds them by, by playing one off against the other. And certainly in 2001, this is really the state of the art, the most uh, 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 cutting edge example of what we could do with AI. And we used it on the front cover of the second book, which I uh, produced, I published with uh, uh, guest edited with uh, Matthias Del Campo, Machine Hallucinations, Architecture and AI, an issue of architectural design that came out in, um, in April uh, 2022. 
But since then, something new has happened. DALI 2 has been released. Um, this has been uh, produced by um, OpenAI and uh, uh, isn't, has so far until today, in fact, has not been accessible to most of the population. Only a few uh, privileged users have been able to use it. And this is, uh, and Refik Anadol was one of those individuals and he teamed up with Zahadid Architects to generate a whole series of, um, of images of buildings, um, which are really far more, far more convincing, I think, than anything that came out, come out of a simple GAN, and is taking us to a new level. This clearly has the capacity to really influence the way that architecture is produced in the architectural office and in the design studio. And, and quite remarkable in its own sort of way, it is a, a, an astonishing new development. Mid-journey, by comparison, of course, is, is, uh, is, has been available to, to many more people and has been has become, there's been an explosion of interest in mid-journey for obvious reasons. Um, it is perhaps less easy to control in some senses, and uh, that perhaps is the delight of it. It allows you to um, explore different sort of options, but you simply can't control it. Um, this again is based on the architecture of Zaha Need Architects, and the way that it works is that it, it generates initially four different outcomes, and then you can either enlarge any one or all those out outcomes, or indeed, uh, ask for variations on those outcomes. So in some senses, you're able to somehow maybe encourage it or coax it in a certain direction, but you can't in any way uh, control it in some senses. I like to think this, think of this as being a little bit like uh, in the design studio where I as an instructor would work with a student. And although the student was designing, I could give certain advice or certain prompts or certain suggestions and the student could explore those suggestions. So it, it opens up a new way of operating, and it certainly produces some astonishing new results. Uh, this was another one that I, I produced. And I would say one thing I point out, these are done very quickly. These are done in a little over an hour. It, it takes you, doesn't take you long to, to generate a whole series of inspirational images um, uh, 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 on mid-journey. So this again is looking at Zahadid architects. Um, you can see, and I think this is one of the most beautiful ones where you've got an intern, a, a kind of a view of some internal system, which is quite carefully sort of laid out and very elegant in some ways, you're getting reflections happening, you're getting uh, a kind of a, a clear sort of sense of, of how the thing is ordered. Um, it's put together very, very well um, and very, very convincingly, albeit with a sort of randomness incorporated into the, into the project, which is precisely possibly what we need uh, to jolt us out of our familiar routines and open up the possibilities to inspire us to explore other, other new potentialities. This is a, a study again, um, using the Zahadid architects as a prompt, looking at a hotel room. I also used um, uh, a comment by uh, Salvador Dali that the future of architecture would be soft and hairy. So I incorporated soft and hairy, and I think you can see the soft and hairiness down here. But what comes out is actually an entirely convincing design that could well have come out of the offices. And if you look at these pictures on the, on the wall here, which are just, put there anyway, and the kind of way in which lighting happens and the way in which the reflection on the floor happens, the whole thing is very, very convincing and remarkable. Um, I'm astonished by what we get out from mid-journey. Um, it's, it's exceeding all my expectations, and it's, it's, it's here before I thought it would be here. Um, again, it's able to produce some extraordinarily voluptuous forms, um, uh, very Zaha-like, frankly, um, uh, and inspirational. We wouldn't have imagined this, but this is coming out with something truly astonishing. There are, of course, certain aspects of this. I mean, first of all, it is just two dimensions, it's not three dimensional at all. And there's certain aspects, if you look very closely, whereby you can see it doesn't make complete sense. This bed here, how, is that, how does that work exactly? But nonetheless, what's interesting is the eye reads it as though it does make sense. So it has, despite these, these inadequacies, nonetheless, it becomes a very, very convincing model. Um, uh, and suggestive model for us to think about. I then uh, tested it out on a different form of architecture. I'm not a minimalist architecture myself, an architect myself, but nonetheless, I, I, I explore the possibility of um, a minimalist villa in the Swiss Alps. And again, look at the, the Alps in the background, very, very convincing. Look at the way in which the, 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 the reflections are handled, again, very, very convincing. And it's coming up with novel, novel uh, interpretations, novel ideas that, frankly, I would never have thought about. This one in particular, I was always struck me as being 
quite surprising and remarkable um, with this little villa in the background there as well. Um, and it, it's what kind of disrupts things. It prompts things. It, 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 we become, we give it prompts, but it prompts us to think again through things. And you can do a series of these by looking at variations on a theme. I did a series on this particular one, and there are about 10 or 12 I generated and, and, and selected from this, of these, uh, uh, these little villas. Um, again, beautiful reflections and remarkable backdrop in the background. I then went from the mountains to the desert and explored this again. Um, this one I find truly astonishing, whereby you get this tray, as it were, with some uh, some water and some sand over the top of the villa itself. Um, a really remarkable suggestion I would never have thought of myself, but everything that came out from this really astonished me and, uh, uh, and, and uh, suggested all sorts of possibilities for the future. So. Um, it seems that it's not limited to, to any particular style of architecture, any particular lo location or terrain. You can use it to generate convincing results wherever you use it. Perhaps the most um, successful of my experiments, and these, these literally were, were, took an hour each. This is what, I, what blows me away. It's so quick to generate these things. Um, uh, uh, this was my, my study of, of um, I call it a, a sofa study rather than sofa, sofa study. And uh, I, I actually used a, a, another um, prompt. Um, uh, the, the, actually, it was a, a, a certain poisonous frog from the Amazon that had very rich colors. And this actually opened up the whole palette of new possibilities in terms of the colors. There also Zahidi Architects was also another prompt for this one. And you can see how it begins to really, um, uh, has a it's very strong feeling of materiality and is, itself it, it, and three-dimensional form itself, it really looks convincing. Um, and it, it's, it's, it, I'm just staggered, I'm just blown away by the, the possibilities that it affords in terms of opening up, um, opening up the imagination and, and, and prompting us to think, rethink the logic of furniture itself. And, and it does so in such a convincing way. Of course, there are moments perhaps when it produces things that are maybe a little bit, I mean, how would you sit in this particular sofa? Um, maybe it might not be easy, but nonetheless, the sofa itself is really a highly original and ravishing design. So something new is coming out of the computer. I also explored more abstract ideas such as pods and cocoons. Um, these are pods which are uh, being generated. Um, and again, it, they don't make complete uh, structural sense. If you follow some of these forms through, it's not quite clear what the structure is, although the eye reads them as though it is convincing structure. But what it does is it, it has a kind of, it, it opens up to this kind of ravishing imagination of, of possibilities of what it might afford, which really become hugely inspirational. And I certainly think this is going to be a game changer in terms of conceptual design for architects. Um, I think that one of the first things we're going to do is to go and, uh, is to go and use one of these, uh, these uh, uh, diffusion models to come up with some suggestions at the very beginning of a project, much in the way as we, we might use Google or Wikipedia now when we start an essay to explore an under, our understanding of what a particular word might mean or typical concept. It seems that this is the visual equivalent of this. Now, one thing I want to stress here is, of course, this is just a kind of very um, a very kind of it's a it's a, a, a schematic early uh, image based um, way of approaching things. Um, now let's not forget there are other aspects of uh, of AI, other other fields of AI that are being explored by others. Topological optimization in terms of say structural uh, um, uh, uh, structural um, suggestions or indeed um, structural solutions um, or indeed the whole way in which um, we can explore the possibility of redefining the whole, the, 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 the way the pipeline, as it were, of producing architecture, the moment we are operating in a very discrete series of things, where there's a conceptual design, they might be working up on Maya, then going into Rhino and going on to BIM and so on. What's become clear that is that that will soon change into a single platform in the future. When you heard one of my Doctor of Design uh, candidates at the Florida International University is the CEO of XCool, and she has been exploring the possibility of what she calls the ABC platform, where it is everything is produced on a seamless on a seamless platform. Which I should say these are what I describe as transparent cocoons. And again, these are astonishing results that are coming out from Mid Journey. So what's going to happen in the future? It seems to me is that we're going to we're going to have a system which is not only a seamless one that goes from data to fabrication, 
but also one that, uh, that, that incorporates performance criteria, building codes, uh, building regulations, um, uh, uh, cost, um, performance criteria, structural performance, uh, uh, environmental performance, acoustic performance, all these things are gonna be written into the model so that what you're producing is already satisfying those particular options. And that seems to me what's gonna happen. We're gonna get a different world entirely. So what's eventually, what is down the line? Well, to my mind, this is an early stage. This is whereby, this is a stage whereby AI is seen as a kind of, let's say a prosthesis to the human imagination. It is able to uh, become an extension of what we can imagine. It becomes a muse, a muse suggesting different sort of options. It is there and we remain in control, but we are using it. We are using it um, in a way where we become in some senses the discriminator. We are the one, well, uh, the diffusion model is the generator generating these possible outcomes. We are, as it were, steering in a particular direction and we are selecting those options. But it won't be long before AI is able to understand precisely what we want in terms of aesthetic pre uh, predilections. It knows already our choice in music, our choice in books, our choice in movies and so on. It knows everything, our choice in, in, in news and so on. Bots are already giving us our choice in those, in those terms. How long is it gonna be before AI is gonna be able to understand precisely what we want in architecture so that it delivers it autonomously all on its own? That, to my mind, is the real promise of AI itself. So what are we to make of this? Well, I, for one, as somebody who has been uh, writing about AI and predicting AI, I'm startled by the way in which we are moving into a new dimension, a new way of operating. I think this is going to become a game changer, a game changer in architecture, a game changer in architecture education, a game changer all over. And it's something that in which, although we've only seen a glimpse of it in terms of images, of course, it can be connected with anything to videos, video games, and so on. It seems to me that the future is full of these possibilities. And the future itself is both exciting, but also terrifying in some way, because when we think about it, what does a diffusion model based on prompts do? It gives us a visual impression based on a verbal instruction, which precisely is the role of the architect. It seems to me, therefore, there is there's no question that the role of the architect will be in some sense threatened by the possibilities of what these can do. And finally, let me finish off with a series of cryogenetic pods where I took just one option and looked at a variety of different possibilities, exploring how the, the different variations might be a, a possible um, uh, and, um, to, to generate. So that's, a, that, that's my view, therefore, of, 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 of mid-journey. I think mid-journey and DALI 2, I have yet to try DALI 2, but these are gonna be game changers in terms of what the, uh, the future of architecture itself.